Hi, today's my birthday. I'm 38 years old and it's almost 5.30. And uh, barring daylight savings time, that's 5.30 p.m. for me and 5.30 a.m. in on the East Coast. The P-R-E-C, as some like to call it. I'm, uh, well, no, I'm. it's the same day because in the uttermost West, I are the future. And I mean, you know, the, the, the slogan is today's news yesterday. So it's my birthday and I'm wearing this gray shirt, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. And I didn't shave and I'm not wearing my hat because I don't have to shave and wear my hat because it's my birthday. So I'm really happy. I'm doing this extra podcast, a Taiwan special. I'm, I'm getting formats. Y you know, I could talk about formats and the, the importance of a format. Grammar, good grammar is a format. If you're all by yourself, talking to yourself, you will develop your own system of grammar. But in a society, we kind of need to agree on a grammar and teach a grammar. And that's a format. The reason you have a format for writing, for media, radio, anything, the reason you have a format is so that the same things can stay the same, so that the uniquenesses can stand out. Uh, well, one of my college buddies, I, I just pull that off the cuff for him. He says, you know, Jesse, I think that's the best defense for style and good formatting that I've ever heard. Because it, it can seem restricting, you know, like you've got to follow the format and everything and get it all right. But the thing is, if you have good formatting, then you don't need to have stickers and labels and all these words on everything. If you just, if you just organize your closet you don't need to label the shelves. I, you know, some people that like label the shelves in their closet. Like there's some people that might do that. If your closet's just not necessarily clean and tidy, but just organized, it's evident that the shoes are over there and that the, 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 the undies are over here. The, the, the favorite thing. Undies. So anyhow, good formatting. So in terms of uh, <coughs> talking about underwear and uh, the Taiwan special and, and clothing, the format, I think, is typically going to go Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Mad Media Monday is when I do the editorials and the Podcast Weekly, which is like announcements. This is a Friday special, and I may not do them all the time. I think I want to leave Fridays for me to be able to go do something, you to be free, and, you know, review is not a bad thing. Like, if you want to go back and listen to something again, that can be a good thing. Uh, Malcolm Gladwell talked about that. In fact, I should, I should explain this. In one of his books, if I sat and thought about it for 30 seconds with a bunch of water, I could tell you which book. But one of Gladwell's books, he talks about Sesame Street and Blue's Clues. Sesame Street, new hour-long episode every day. Once a month, they would test it with kids. They, like they would have children watch it and they would see, you know, you know, what, which parts are distracting. Blue's Clues, 30 minutes, and it was the same episode every day, Monday through Friday. The same episode would play again and again every week. So one episode a week, 30 minutes, and they would scientifically test every single episode. And Blue's Clues, supposedly, according to the quantitative research, was more effective because of the repetition. And on, you know, I think it was something like on the first day, it was... Children knew it was a new episode on the second day. Uh, it kind of still felt new. On Wednesday, it was boring to the kids. On Thursday, they knew it was an old episode, but they saw things they never saw before. And on Friday, they were loving it, repeating the whole episode through and with it. And that goes back to quality versus quantity. And this writing series that I've come up with, it's my birthday, and I'm a little bit bummed today. I'm a little bummed today on my birthday because I only published one book. I was hoping to publish 20, but I only got one book published today. Isn't that a bummer when you can only get one book published in a day? It, it's so much of a bummer. I'm, yeah. But I'll get over it. Me and my Marie Antoinette syndrome. Life is too good for me, I suppose. Maybe I'll eat cake. It's my birthday after all. So I got this book published, and, and but this week I finished the Read With Dot series. I talked about it in the podcast weekly. This... It's, it's, a, it's a beginning reader series. Books.jessieseal.com. Scroll down to the bottom. And today I got, I got the, the uh, I think they call it an anthology. It's, it's, it's a collection. It's a collection, a series of nine books 
But then I had another book that just puts all of them into one book. Color Pages, beginning with phonics, a lot of stuff you'd see on Sesame Street, or I suppose Blue's Clues, which I actually never watched a Blue's Clues episode. <clears throat> Pardon my French. If uh, you read through the phonics regularly, again, repetition. Repetition every day. Go through all the phonics. I don't believe in teaching one sound a day. I believe in teaching all the sounds every day. Repetition. And there's a little girl. In two months, I had her finished with book one. And it was she, I was testing this with her just before publishing it. I just finished publishing it. I had her all the way through the phonics book one, starting phonics, and then I had her reading. She was starting to successfully and correctly read dot dot, which is book two, the first reading book. And I've tested this with a number of people while I was in Taiwan with total beginners. Uh, usually a lot of luck with eight-year-olds, but I've had luck with six-year-olds. And they read this, they go through it, their reading ability just goes really fast. It's not comprehensive, it's a fast track, and it's well tested, and like I say, blues clues, everyday repetition, and that's what this is geared for. It doesn't teach everything, it teaches the backbone, and it's meant to be highly repetitious. And because it's formatted, there aren't explanations, there aren't pretty pictures so that the children can fake their way reading through. It's large print, sometimes as large as I think 32 when you're dealing with the phonics. Like it starts really big and slowly gets smaller. Very repetitious, very carefully geared. Uh, one book in the middle seems boring, but I've been through it with myself and it needs to be where it is. Book number five, I do believe. Very boring, but very necessary. Repetition. And I've taken a number of kids through this and it's been incredibly effective. So each book, the phonics book was $15 and each of the, there's a little tiny book. There's not much text in them. Not much. Only a few pages, very large print. But it's a, it's a comprehensive backbone. And if kids get the concept, and even older adult ESL students, it's the same. It's the, I've, I've always believed in, in being very simple and minimalistic and following through. And so, uh, like, like, like going all the way through in a way that would work for everyone. And, and reaching everyone, not by watering things down, but reaching everyone by perfecting it. By getting something perfectly balanced, it's palatable by everyone. And if you want, you can always supplement, of course. I mean, it's not meant to be a standalone. It's meant to be a backbone so that other reading will empower people to teach themselves. So I've gone through it and it's, I'm, I'm thrilled. Each book was $10. The phonics book was $15. Color pages, all of them have color coded words uh, to, to emphasize learning. Not explanations, just, just the words and just the list. And so we're talking $95 for a nine book series. Pretty expensive. And I would make sometimes under a dollar per book because I wanted to keep the price low. But the anthology, the collection is only $35. And I'm, I, it's published on Amazon. I'm currently waiting for it to finish. So that, that was something that I'm very happy and very thrilled that I was able to get finished while I was here. Uh, it, it able to, to just, I mean, I'd, I'd ask people, you know, would you teach my kid English? Well, I'm sorry, but I'm not an English teacher, but I can use him as a guinea pig and test out my books. So I'll do that. So I'm, I'm familiar a little bit uh, with with stuff going on um, in Asia, and I want to talk about this shirt. I'm really happy about this shirt. I just got back from dealing with uh, a buddy of mine uh, this morning, and on my way out of the factory, he said, uh, I, I asked him about shirts, because I've got this t-shirt design, which if you pay attention at all, you, you know, it's that, that guy's, that cream colored shirt with the, the black letters and like the, the shirts that I wear, uh, except for the pinstripe shirt. That's just a nice shirt that I like, but the shirts that I wear, I sell. I'm, I'm here in Asia. I know how this stuff works. So I had this design and in getting MOQ minimum order quantity is difficult. And it makes sense. It's not about buying things in bulk, the, 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 the Sam's Club culture, the, the Costco Sam's Club culture. It's not what I'm talking about. 
Manufacturing is a machine. It's, 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 you have to think the whole factory is a giant machine and you've got to kickstart it. And by the time you get the machine started, it costs so much money just to start the machine that you need to keep the machine running for a while in order for it to be worth it. If you're not going to do that, then make them individually and by hand and that's luxury expensive. So, uh, I'd say luxury expensive, not like luxury style expensive. That's luxury and expensive. So, Getting MOQ to get the design working is kind of difficult. So, you know, my friend is in the garment industry. He says, Jess, you don't want to be in the garment industry. It's not an easy industry. But he has all these great shirts. It's a little, it's a mildly new design. There's not too much, uh, you know, it's, it's not too big on the sides. It's, it's made for, uh, you know, it's, we'll say skinny people, so to speak. Um, and it's, I mean, it's not, not for super skinny people. We're not talking about weird. We're just talking... You know, it's not a shirt shaped like a triangle with little itty bitty tiny shoulders and great big enormousness at the waist. That, that's, that's just not how to make shirts, even for people that are a little, little bit chubby. So, these are great, excellent shirts and I'm just going to brand them and throw art on them and use those to see if we can get guys started that way. They're, they're good quality shirts. These are really good shirts or I wouldn't be using them. Now, these are not made in China. They're actually made in Vietnam, a U.S. ally. I think we owe Vietnam a favor. I'm not all about sending jobs overseas, but these are shirts already being made overseas. And it's a Taiwanese company and I've been to the factory. I've seen the Vietnamese that are there. It's really an amazing, I mean, it, it's like they're at summer camp every day. I mean, they, they, the ladies wear makeup, they all go eat lunch together in the cafeteria and they're just this happy crew. And, you know, I'm not going to say that they don't have problems, but they're really, really happy people. It's just really a, a great factory. And by having to follow our American expectations for this quality stuff that they don't think about, we're helping lift their culture up out of the mess that we gave them. And I've talked about this at other times and in other situations. So I don't want to be like a broken record, but you know, it's, it's hard growing up in a country where you get your leg blown off because you're hard, you know, doing hard work on the farm uh, because an American president died and some other guy came along and started a war so he could be important. And... Um, I mean, it was a war that nobody wanted. And even after the fact, the, the reason that America supposedly was fighting the war is because the Americans presumed that because the new Vietnamese government, the revolutionary government called itself communists, that they were siding with China. And actually, they had called themselves communists for whatever reason, because that was their only way to fight against China or something like that. And so afterwards, it was this massive moment of realization saying, oh my goodness, you know, if, if they, we'd only known, we wouldn't even had the Vietnamese War. But, you know, it's a self-important president and it's very, 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 very sad. So, um, I've got this, this shirt and I think that we owe Vietnam a favor and Taiwan is an ally. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, Taiwan should, I mean... Taiwan would do great to have the status of uh, a Puerto Rico or, or a Guam or something like that. I think that, that'd be great. And a lot of Taiwanese would favor that. Um, Taiwan has been an enormous friend of the United States. In the Vietnam War, uh, the, the city I'm in, the airport, which is 20 minutes from my house, everything's 20 minutes from my house. It's really funny. The, the airport uh, was the airport Americans used uh, in the Vietnam War. <laughs> so that's, that, that's, that's kind of fun. Um, so I'm at my buddy's factory today. He's got two factories, one in Taiwan. And we, he's, he's showing me a product. I can't talk much about it. Um, but I, <laughs> I tell you, there is a, a product being sold in America. If you're into motorsports, uh, if you're into to wearing helmets, dirt bikes, snowmobile, if you're into that sort of thing at all, you are going to love what we're coming out. I've, I've been a model in this. I'm going to be recording it. I've, I mean, it's a model. I'm you know, the guy in the video demonstrating how it works. Of course, I'm incredibly handsome. I'm the, the handsomest is the, the greatest, the best. And I'll probably, just because it's me, me in it, it's probably going to sell. And because I'm going to be narrating, it's going to sell even more, probably. Okay, all right. I'm being braggadocious because that's fun. Because isn't it, isn't it great not waking up angry and not being offended by everything and not wasting half of your words telling other people, well, 90% of your words, not telling everybody to be offended. 
I, I love being happy and not being offended all the time. It's, it's a really, it's a happy life. And I recommend it to everyone. And it's my happy birthday. So I'm not being offendable. So I am freely braggadocious. And you should be too. And, and be happy about it. Just the, the, the issue with being braggadocious is that you're not putting other people down in order to be. Not, not people feel a certain way, that's on them. But you're not telling other people, I'm good and you're not. Just say, I'm, gr- I'm good. And I, I'm the best. Are you the best what? I'm the best me. <laughs> well, I hope you're the best you. I hope you're being the best you that you can be. I mean, uh, even in the Christian worldview, the competition is not against others for some seat in heaven, as if God has, uh, <laughs> as, as if God doesn't know how to make more of something. I mean, there, there's just not, there aren't commodities in heaven. You know, your, your, your competition for the afterlife is only against yourself. You know, think about that. Just, just, just think about that. So I, I'm leaving my buddy's factory and I asked him about shirts. He said, Jess, you need these shirts. So I've got an incredible discount on these shirts and we're going to brand them and we're going to be selling them. And that's my happy birthday. So the, the deal here is, the story here is that um, in the coming weeks, I'm going to give you an extra special Taiwan special day. There's going to be two of them today because I'm geeked and want to talk about something. And next week, uh, I've already had the Taiwan special recorded, I believe, for the next week or two. I, I have them scheduled and uploaded. And you need to know this. I might be uploading videos to YouTube early. <coughs> Pardon my French. I, you know, no, I don't have a cough switch. On the radio, they have a button. When you, when you, and I don't, I don't, I could do that, but I don't need that. I don't want that. So, yes, next week's going to be interesting with the Taiwan special. And that's, I'm going to talk about personality disorders in Asia. That's going to be fun. But because it's my birthday and I'm geeked and I want to talk about something, I'm going to make another video. So it's going to be double today and enjoy, have fun. Cheerio bonus Friday.